Yo, what's up? My name is Retro Pat, and I've played a fair amount of Dungeon Defenders, a couple hundred hours over the years, and I love that game to death, and I still feel like I'm rediscovering that game. However, Dungeon Defenders 2 was one of my most anticipated games of all time, and I had always felt like it really let me down when I finally got around to playing it, but maybe I was just trying to play it in a different way, or maybe I wasn't sure what Dungeon Defenders 2 was trying to be. I would like to retry and reattempt to enjoy Dungeon Defenders 2 today. My perspective was always that it came off very mobile gamey to me at the time, and it was following that new free-to-play model, which I like. I love a free-to-play game, but they ended up going hard into microtransactions, or at least it seemed at the time. Now, maybe my understanding of that is incorrect. Maybe it's changed. Maybe that's how it was. I don't know. We're going to see how Dungeon Defenders 2 plays from scratch today. I have around six hours in it on Steam, but I don't even remember how long ago that was or how far I got. So today I really want to re-experience and revisit Dungeon Defenders 2 with you guys. Let's jump into it. Etheria was once a land of living legends. Years ago, young warriors stood together against an immortal evil known as the Old Ones. Look, that's me. In the wake of this struggle, these brave heroes resealed the power of the Old Ones within mystical artifacts known as Eternia Crystals. That's not me. I haven't beaten the DLC For a yet. Time, there was peace. Now a mysterious force travels across the land, destroying the Eternia Crystals one by one and liberating this ancient evil. Only a handful of crystals remain. After five years of war, even the most powerful strongholds in Etheria succumb to the onslaught of the Old One's army. Leaders and champions from across the realm are forced to put aside their differences and band together to form the Defense Council. With their options dwindling, the Council decides to gather the remaining Eternia crystals and seal them within the fortified kingdom of Dragonfall. After a long and uneventful journey, the heroes are the first to arrive. They look forward to storing the crystal behind the protected walls of Dragonfall. And finally, getting some rest. All right, so some big bad guy is going around smashing all the crystals. We locked up all the smaller bad guys in, and that's a bunch more bad guys. Bad guy stuff going on. All right, pretty simple fantasy story. Let's jump into... This is like the already the confusing part. Ah, oh, Dungeon Defenders so complicated. Um, I can go play now, go to town, or go to private tavern. I don't really know what go to town... I assume it's some public tavern type thing. Should I go to town or should I go to a private tavern? Let's go to a private tavern. Get my bearings first, see what characters I even have created on here. So I'm sure I have a squire that I played on forever ago. The question is, I probably want to start from scratch. I probably want to go ahead and delete any characters that I have, or maybe just create a new one. Um, it's loading the session. Okay, there we go. Slow load times, but maybe it's just something. Shards being explained to me. Shards, attach new passive boost to your equipment slots. Okay, so these are basically gems from something like Path of Exile or Fate or Diablo. Some sort of dungeon crawler type thing. That's good to know. Welcome to your private tavern. Here's my squire characters. I have a squire, a monk, and a huntress. All level 18? They level at different paces? Or did I level them all up to that? That position. The huntress bow and arrow does feel really cool in this. That's like super, super sick. Then we have the squire. Um, not, a, I just prefer the, I definitely prefer the graphics of Dungeon Defenders 1, um, but that doesn't mean, who cares about graphics? You know, I'm here for the gameplay, I'm here for the mechanics, I'm here to learn stuff, and there's a lot for me to learn here, a lot for me to explore. I've got a mailbox, there's all these different systems and NPCs that contain things that my dun one Dungeon Defenders 1 brain is just too small for, so we're gonna have to learn. What's this? We're gonna run every single NPC and just talk to them. The scavenger. Is some gonna be some sort of mechanic that I don't have to worry about right now? What's this guy? We're gonna talk to everybody and just see what's up. Have you visited the professor yet? He appears he has new ways to configure your equipment. Okay, so we want to find the professor. We'll keep that in mind. And I remember this is the war table. I have to fix my keybinds. This is the war table, which is similar to, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is similar to the crystal in Dungeon Defenders One. It actually allows you to go ahead and like make your plans and jump into battle and stuff, which is really cool. 
sort of see some things popping up there. So let's take a look at it. So here we can see the campaign. We've got the Gates of Dragonfall, Dragonfall Bazaar, Greystone Plaza, the Ramparts, and the Throne Room. So some of these have been completed by me before, but I think I do want to go ahead and restart. Uh, is it possible for me to create a new squire? What's the best way for me to do this? Create hero. The hunter. Uh, Ooh, there are new classes and stuff, which are cool. Okay. And here comes the... I don't know if I'd say problem, but here comes something. Um, you have to buy the new heroes. So if you want, like, the hunter, you have to either pay 12,000 of this currency, which I don't know how difficult is that to get, um, or you pay, you know, 1,500 gems, which I don't know how much that costs in USD, or you can get like the bundle. So there's already microtransaction vibes of getting new characters, but Dungeon Defenders 1 had that as well with the Hermit um, and sort of other DLC characters. DLC characters are fine. Um, and I also, so a green flag to me is that there's not a shit ton of these characters. The fact that there's only a couple kind of actually shows me, oh, okay, they actually like wanted to balance these. They didn't just pump these out like League of Legends or something to sell as many skins as possible. You know, there's this game's been out for when did Dungeon Defenders 2 release is a great question. This game supposedly released in 2017. So it's been out for six years, and there's only these were the base champions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen extra DLC characters. That's pretty fair to me. I think that's a good amount of extra content. Um, but at the same time, really honing in, it shows me, I could be wrong, it shows me they were probably focusing on balance to some extent. If they, if they truly wanted to turn this into a microtransaction game, they would have been pumping out as many characters as possible to sell them off. Uh, this guy is also a new character, the hunter, like pretty new from what it seems from the main menu and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if I can create a squire is what I'm a little worried about. Um, I might need another character card or something, get an additional four used cards of four. That's another thing that scares me, is that it seems as though, yeah, I have the maximum amount of heroes possible. How do I view all of my heroes? There's also a Defender's Pass. Gotcha. So there's a Battle Pass in Dungeon Defenders too. That's also unfortunate to see. Now, Battle Passes aren't inherently bad. They just are a red flag, I would say, of monetization. Um, they aren't inherently bad. It's not a bad thing to reward the player by playing more of the game, playing more of the game to give them more rewards. It's kind of cool, but the, to play to unlock that is is one is a little questionable. But but then it becomes how many hours does it take, and do they have to log in to get dailies and stuff like that? So I'm seeing a lot of red flags in Dungeon Defenders Two already. The shard shop. I've heard a little bit about this. I've heard this is a big deal. Um, I don't know anything about that, so I don't want to jump into. I don't want to judge too early. But I do want to judge based off of the game knowledge that I do understand what makes a good game. And it's also really important to understand that the first hour, the first hour of playing a video game is just hyper, hyper important. Um, there's some crazy stats about how usually like 60% or something of, of people who play a video game will quit within the first hour. So the first hour has to be solid. And that's an appropriate thing to judge, even if it is harsh. Game keeps telling me to press J to open the quest menu. So let's go ahead and look at this. Defend the attorney, the throne room. So let's just tell me to do that certain thing. Quests are good though. Uh, slay 200 dark mages, win three maps in Torino Valley. These are daily missions. That's what I was talking about with, with sort of dailies. And uh, as you can see, if you, if you do these dailies, you do get that type of currency, which does allow you to end up being able to buy uh, the others, which is cool that you're able to freely earn it. That is interesting, but it does worry me once again that you, you earn that via dailies. Hopefully you can earn them as well through some other means very consistently, but I would say a lot of red flags unfortunately uh pet petrinarian and hatchery this is very cool love to see a more complicated pet system the pets in uh dungeon fairs were always just wildly interesting so super cool to see that uh if you'd like to browse the emporium emporium that's the wow so that's the um pay to win shop isn't it the emporium isn't that the like not pay to win shop but it's the it's the shop right so the, yeah the real world um shop how much is it to buy these so 1500 is a one of the new characters so it's more than ten dollars. It's like fifteen dollars, and conveniently, you can't buy fifteen hundred gems. You can only buy twenty three hundred. Man, I've had a lot of people swear by Dungeon Defenders two in my comments, and maybe it's one of those games. There are games that are pay to win or super 
microtransaction manipulative. There are games like that where they're actually still great games and it's worth pushing through and just ignoring the, the pay to win aspect or the, or the financial asset. I shouldn't say pay to win. I don't know if this game is pay to win yet. I'm overusing that term. So I apologize. Uh, so far I'm just seeing a lot of aggressive, horribly toxic microtransaction stuff. So when you see stuff like this, when it's 1500, right 1500 for for most of the new heroes at a base price right? you can get the extra pack for 2300 and when crystals or gems or whatever you want to call them just so conveniently don't have a 1500 pack uh you can either do two transactions and do 1100 plus 500 get 1600 and you have 100 extra leftover gems wow what an awkward amount might as well buy more gems um might as well buy the 20 dollars you're only spending five dollars more but that if everyone spends that five dollars more the game makes a lot more money um it's one of those, it's definitely, when you have things that cost 1500 man, it's definitely just streaming one of those red flags to me of manipulative price gouging. So, super unfortunate to see that. A lot of red flags, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and check some other things, though, as well. Also, the fact that this game has a battle pass and a shop and an Emporium, Emporium, excuse me, is, is really, really, I guess that's Fortnite-type monetization, which is, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and look at, um... What are the things, what are, what are in these? What are these packs? Uh, open for one drop from a huge variety of special items. No. Certainly you can't open gear, right? I don't know what this entails. I don't know, so I won't say anything. Tower skins, cosmetics. This is a really, really cool and fantastic idea for monetization. That's really cool. I really respect that. Um, these starter bundles. Starter bundles are almost always trying to encourage those microtransactions. Okay, I'm going to take a break from even looking at these because I could just sit here all day. This is screaming to me. Dungeon Defenders 2 is screaming to me that it is just another microtransaction hellhole for, uh, I don't, it's, yeah, that's, that's not good. That's, that's not good. So let's just go ahead and stay away from the important stuff. Let's try to look at some of the good. Let's try to play the game and see how that feels. What I do like is the vast world of this tavern, all of the aesthetics and all of the decorations and decor and all the stuff put into building these little sections. Here you have the blacksmith. Over here you have like the mage, spooky explorer. Uh, what's over here? Some sort of like Lunar New Year celebration type thing. Like there's a lot of very, very cool elements that exist in the tavern. And there's hopefully more cool elements that could exist in Dungeon Defenders too. But I do get red flags hard heavy from the shop. Let's continue on looking though. I want to jump into a map here in a quick sec. The tavern keep still doing his normal chill stuff. Press E for bugs. Pull up a chair. Ah, the little report bug function. So F is to talk in this game as opposed to E. An old arcade cabinet. I think it's a reference to an a old card arcade cabinet like myth or thing on like i guess not myth it's like an old wise tale on the internet called P polybius or whatever i'm sure a lot of people know more about it dungeon defenders did a map in dungeon defenders one alluding to that same like myth or theory as well so kind of interesting all right enough exploration i would argue let's go ahead and jump into the war table and i guess just jump into the throne room it feels a little funny um also another weird point of dungeon defenders too i do remember this you know what you know what I might do? Maybe we'll just jump back to the very first level. It's strange. There's only normal and hard difficulty in Dungeon Defenders 2. Maybe that on maybe maybe more difficulties unlock later in the game, but it just seems strange to me. Why would you take easy, normal, hard, all these different complexities, all these different game modes and difficulties from Dungeon Defenders 1, which I've played through like each one of those, and it really allowed me to replay the game like four to five times, going through easy, medium, hard, insane, and then eventually Nightmare. It's such a fun progression loop. Why would you remove that? Why is it only normal and hard? That seems really silly to me. If you want to argue make it more streamlined to make it less complicated, I would argue difficulties are probably one of the easiest things to understand in video games. Oh, you know, easy is the easiest and the hardest is the hardest. You can kind of go in between from there. One of my favorite video game systems I've ever seen was the difficulty system in Diablo 3. The fact that when you played more difficult systems, you would actually get rewarded with more XP and gold, which is similar to what Dungeon Defenders 1 does with its systems of easy, medium, hard, insane, and nightmare. So let's see how Dungeon Defenders 2 holds up in terms of gameplay. I'm going to go ahead and do the tutorial deck, I, or the, the tutorial game mode, sure. Let's go ahead and jump into it. The load times are strange. I don't know why this is a problem. I don't know why it's... 
taking so long? Uh, I'm currently on a GTX 3050 PC um, CPU. I don't know the stats off the top of my head, unfortunately. Um, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Pre pre not, a, not a crazy PC, but a solid one. And to see those load times is a little strange. A little strange. Wired connection to the internet. Okay. WSD to move. Space to jump. Just the, door. the uh, letters looked good as a little positive. The letters there looked good. We'll go ahead and press G and learn the basics. Right click to block. This is all similar to Dungeon Defenders 1. Left click to attack. Very cool tutorial, honestly, from what I'm seeing. I liked the text in the air. Simple step by step. Letting stuff. Okay. So we're going to do a wave. Now, I will say, I don't like that they're introducing us to combat only. It feels like also this is a huge issue that I that I have with Dungeon Defenders 2 is that in my opinion, maybe this is this is definitely just a personal preference, the combat does not feel as satisfying in Dungeon Defenders 2. Like it doesn't feel like I'm hitting the enemy. It doesn't feel like I can't tell my range. I can't I mean there is like the I guess the slash. Maybe maybe it's maybe I need to get more of a chance. But to me, the weird slashing and the sound design is a huge part of it. Sound design is massive in games. Sound design really impacts how you feel about certain things happening. It's how you feel about hitting an enemy. It's how you feel about getting hit, you know? You want to hear a loud, satisfying noise when you deal damage to an enemy, and you want to hear a scary, like angry sound or something of a sort or sad sound when taking damage it's where things like the oof from you know roblox comes from or the oof of minecraft like both of those games have very distinct um damaging sounds and when you deal damage to a zombie in, in minecraft it goes like ah you know it doesn't like that either so having that distinct sound design is super important dragon comes through wipes out some more towers now it's going to explain us the basics of tower building i do think it's interesting that they make it so there's three clear walkways things could get to on this map and it's interesting that they started off showing you hey you could just take care of two of the walkways and then manually defeat one that's kind of interesting um, let's go ahead and follow the guide place the spike blockade where they want us to place it let's go ahead and place a cannonball turret now we're placing cannonball turrets we're placing cannonball turrets facing up a hill which is a huge no-no in dungeon defenders one let's see if it works a lot better in Dungeon Defenders 2. It seems seemed like it was already. Uh, what's the button to upgrade? I saw the upgrade opportunity on this Q is to upgrade. So it's 50 green gems to upgrade. We'll go ahead and do that if we wanted to. That's pretty quick to be able to just Q on something and upgrade. That's a nice little... The, the key mapping seems a lot better in Dungeon Defenders 2, which is really promising. But the UI, I would argue is a little more questionable. I definitely prefer the UI of Dungeon Defenders 1. Maybe that's just nostalgia. Um, can I press tab to see the map? No, I cannot. Can I see the map in any way? M just dropped something. Some of my mana or something. Else. Let's press, if I press M again. M dropped 10 mana. Interesting. Only 10 is strange. That would drop all your mana in Dungeon Defenders 1. Um, not seeing how to open up my map. Let's press tilde. Just pressing whatever. Control is going to show me. Okay, well, this is interesting. Control is going to show me areas of attack from my towers and how they're launching out of the cannonballs. That's pretty cool, as well as details on the incoming minions. Now, that is good. That is cool to see. So, control... That's, sorry, shift click. Holding shift give me gives me access to more of that information. That's cool. So there are two separate manas. It seems like there is tower building mana with green gems, and then there's blue mana, which regenerates over time, which is your ability mana. I really liked that your mana in Dungeon Defenders 1 was used to build towers and use your abilities. I thought it made for more strategic choices. As opposed to here, you don't really have that option. You just always have that mana. Now, maybe this allows for certain other builds to be a little more impactful, but once again, one of those choices, it's a, it's a possible streamlined choice, but I don't even know if it actually helps the game in the way that I would expect it to. Prepare to press G when ready. All right, let's say we're ready. I want to see how these cannonballs attack because they used to be very different, it seems like, in Dungeon Defenders 1, or it would be my guess. But let's see how these go for it. I pressed G, did I not? Are the minions incoming? Okay, here they come, just slowly. Okay, so they shoot, like, straight gunshots. Almost like a musket. The way that, yeah, they shoot straight. They don't have these, like, gigantically heavy... Um, slow moving cannons they just have these one shot musket type okay 
that do big damage. That's a cool rebalance, I will say, to the Hannibal turret. That's probably what it should have been initially. That's a really, really good balancing change. I do really like to see that. I would like to try to set up a harpoon at some point to see how that's been changed. Also, adding these traps. These, like, active traps to go around and press and get rewarded for doing that is very cool. The level design of this first level is very good. This higher ground uh, to be able to, you know, use these higher up traps and get rewarded for that. The simple three-way uh, lanes are a really good way to show off a beginning map and let you learn the, the basics with simple checkpoints. I really, really do like that. Now, once again, so you just saw, let's pause for a sec. You just saw wave complete on my screen, but you heard no sound effect. Why? Or very little sound effect. When you hear, when you see wave complete in Dungeon Defenders 1, there's like a song that plays, a huge uh, gratifying sound. Why was there no sound there? That is really disappointing. Like that is a very basic level of sound design, I would argue. And maybe I'm just, you know, looking for too much. I don't think so. I think sound design is, is a basic core principle of any video game. Sound design is so important. You cannot overlook it or underestimate it. The game is kind of telling me to place a mage tower here, but I actually don't have a mage. I have a monk and a huntress. This is okay. This is also one of the cool. This is a great, I would argue, quality of life change. The ability to switch between heroes on the fly within your little pool. That's really cool. That is a legitimate just quality of life change. Having to run back to the tavern defense place to um, be able to actually switch was super annoying. It's kind of a pain. It's not really needed. I think the ability to switch between the F keys, once again, super. that's a super cool, legit, good quality of life change. It also pushes forward the sort of use of multiple characters, which wasn't really known in Dungeon Defenders 1. It's very important in Dungeon Defenders 1. Like, you have to multi-box, essentially, with different heroes and everything. Um, but it's not really pushed via the natural gameplay until you reach a point of, okay, this level is just too difficult. I need monk auras, like something like that, and having to set them both up. But being able to do it so seamlessly in in Dungeon Defenders 2 is, is definitely a super huge impact. Now, I can go ahead and put some upgrades around. Why not? Do I have to sit here and let it upgrade? This one got canceled, I just realized. So it takes quite a while to upgrade a thing. Does it full heal it when it upgrades? Let's look like it's a kind of swing. Okay, so while it's upgrading, I can walk around. That's interesting. I could walk around. I could do damage in other ways. Let me go deal with these, like, bomber guys doing some damage. Myself. I want to set up a harpoon as well, if possible, to see how that functions. But there we go. Okay, we get a victory. We get a victory screen with a pretty cool sound effect. That's at least a, a plus one from the wave complete, but the wave complete was nothing. I think of sound design when it comes to the final wave. I didn't even know it was the final wave, right? In this one, I assume that's that three out of three in the top right. Um, we get a chest, like a loot chest from completing the map. Now, getting a loot chest from completing a map is interesting. I think it actually could be fun. Like that, that's like, kind of like a boss drop almost, but after every single level, which is actually, okay. I actually think that this is a cooler way to deal with loot than the chests from uh, just like opening them for mana and stuff. And, those, and uh, minions having a chance to drop them. This is, this is very, very cool to me. Having said that, this system in a game with as many chests and stuff I've already seen in the shop. So are these chests? No way. Surely not. Surely that, surely these chests aren't the same, but I think they look the same. Surely these chests aren't the same as the one in the Emporium. Emporium. I can't say this word correctly. Emporium, correct? Surely not. I think they are. Epic Defender. Like, unless I'm just mistaken something. 50 defender packs. Buy a stack of 50. What's a defender pack? Open for one drop of huge variety of special items. Like, it's, it's, it seems like you're able to just, instead of playing the game, you could just buy straight rolls of the chest. That seems pay to win to me, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if those chests actually give you good enough drops. I don't know if it's, I don't know. It's all about end game in terms of pay to win, and it's really hard to call something. I don't feel comfortable calling something, oh, for sure, pay to win, um, unless I've played it for a fair amount of time to understand the end game. And I do not understand even the, or I don't even understand the early game to a confident enough degree with Dungeon Defenders 2. So I do want to be careful with my claims. Let's head back to the tavern, I guess, and continue on. Pretty unsatisfying first level, um, but that ending chest was exciting for me to open. But it's also cheapened and kind of less. What's like? What is this weird load time? Why? I'm in a private session.
I don't understand. And then you have to, because there's the connection load time, and now there's this load screen. Why? That's a long load time for a private session instance. That is so strange to me. The load times of this game, and I understand this is a big tavern. If the tavern alone is just a big load time, that's understandable. But the connection to like the session load time is really brutal to me. All right, we did the first level, pretty simple. We're, we've done these for, for whatever. I'm going to jump into the throne room and see if I can actually do this. Also, what's the difference of play map versus play private? Why would... Why would play map... Why would, it, why would it be play map and play private versus play multiplayer and play private? Why would it, why would the default be play map? Unless I'm mistaken something. That seems such a silly wording to me. I'm sorry. I feel, I feel like I'm being overwhelmingly negative. I'm really trying to enjoy Dungeon Defenders too, but I feel like... There are so many, like, glaring design flaws that are, that are, you know, it's nothing crazy. This is the most basic design flaws, right? It's the most basic design flaws of malicious mobile gameplay. And it's kind of what I worry about. But maybe I'm wrong. I wanna, maybe I'm wrong. As, as a first impressions from a Dungeon Defenders 1 enjoyer. So this is a, that's cool. That's a really cool, like, trap to be able to activate. Let's see if I can actually complete this map. Let's try to analyze checkpoint or choke points. So I can press shift. When I press, well, now I'm pressing shift and I'm not seeing minion spawns. Before it showed me minion spawns. When I held the shift key, now it's not doing that. You hear the clicking noise. You should be able to hear the clicking noise. I can't, I don't see the minion information now. Why? That's really strange. Okay, we're defending this child king for whatever reasons. You can see him up there. So we've got this crystal to defend and then this crystal as well to defend. Crystal cart? And what is this? Are these different things? Throne core. Do I actually have to defend both or can I only defend one? That's such a strange thing. Um, I have zero green mana. How can I get green mana? Can I open chests around the map? Am I just supposed to press G? Oh... This is another weird thing. I actually forgot about this. You have to ready up to go into the build phase. So now I'm in the build phase. Now I can press shift and see the minions. I don't understand why they added that extra phase. So now there's like a prep phase, build phase, and then battle phase. Maybe it was for insane difficulty or something with timers to allow you to explore. But I feel like that's the whole difficult part of that, of the map is to have to plan your builds in a quick amount of time, not just place them in a quick amount of time. Strange decisions. Maybe another, maybe a more experienced Dungeon Defenders 2 player can tell me what I'm missing there. I would love for Dungeon Defenders 2 players to comment and tell me what am I doing wrong or what am I missing? Um, what points do I have fair? What points are unfair, right? Tell me, tell me what I'm missing. I would like to be able to, I would love to be able to appreciate Dungeon Defenders 2 to some sort of degree uh, to allow myself to, I mean, yeah, just appreciate the game. So let's go ahead and Place some towers around. We're starting with. Also, we don't collect chests. We just have the mana. I just have 1,000 green mana. Um, that's yeah. I just have it. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna place a ballista here. I guess that's why I would defend this. How many defense units do I have access to? Uh, that costed 40,000 defense units. Is that the real math on that? I think that's the thing, right? And then this is. Let's go ahead and place this here. I guess. Yeah, so the way it works is, oh, that's wildly, I don't like that. Maybe I'm, maybe that makes it more simple for a lot of people. The defense units is the same as the mana, right? So let me go ahead and place a spike blockade here. Um, Man, if something costs 30 mana to build, it also costs 30 defense units. To me, that just seems like you're inflating the numbers so high. I have 1,100 defense units. That feels like way more complicated math as opposed to... But maybe it's easier for some people. I don't know. That's going to be personal preference. But it seems like an inflated number. It's giving RS3 vibes in terms of inflated gold and inflated... Just bumping up the numbers times 100. Just to feel, make the numbers feel big. To make the players make it, make the, they're feeling, make, make it feel like they're making more progress than they actually are. But... I could be mistaken. Maybe that's too malicious of an assumption by me. So let's go ahead and place this here and then go ahead and place a harpoon. I'm harpoon gang. Maybe harpoons aren't as good in Dungeon Defenders 2. I'm going to have to learn today. 
we'll see what happens. I also really, really, really wish I could press tab or, or something to allow myself to see the map. Not being, I know you're having that pop right over there, but being able to see a larger overlay would be really nice for me. I'm trying to set up, now this is a really cool part of Dungeon Defenders too. I'm trying to set up my spike blockades and my walls in front of these manual traps that I can trigger to maximize my ability to like kill these minions. That's such a fantastically interesting and fantastically cool thing to have to consider when setting up your towers in Dungeon Defenders 2. It adds such an extra element and complicated aspect and that's very, 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 very cool to me. It's kind of crazy how many more defense units you have in Dungeon Defenders 2. How many more defense units and how many more... How much mana, more mana you have in the first wave is just ridiculous in Dungeon Defenders 2. Um, it just is crazy, crazy, crazy how much, how many more resources you have. Like, this is wave one, and I'm placing, like, I'm about to, like, almost put all of my defense units. So I still have 110 mana which I think is almost my maximum defense units. So I can almost place max DU wave one. That's very strange to me. Okay, but maybe it's what you need in Dungeon Defenders too. Maybe the, the start is very strong. I'm gonna go ahead and press G and see how this wave plays out. I have a lot of things placed. I do have a little bit of extra mana, so we'll see what comes from that. Uh, eight seems to be, this seems to be the new like weekend slice and dice. I am actually kind of curious in testing this. I don't know how powerful it'll be. The minions are pretty slow moving in Dungeon Defenders 2 for the most part. Actually, I don't know. I think that they're faster than the lower difficulty minions in Dungeon Defenders 1. I think they are faster than the, but it's hard to tell. I do think, um, well, I don't know. It's kind of tough. The minion designs are very interesting to me in Dungeon Defenders 2. Like I actually do like the designs of these characters, but I would also argue they're not original. Um, they, or they don't seem it to me. Now, I haven't played that many mobile games, um, but it's giving hard clash of plans to me. It is hard giving, in my opinion, um, mobile gamey character sprites. Like, maybe I'm wrong, but this to me is just streaming clash of clans. <laughs> it's streaming some sort of mobile game. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's just in my head. Maybe that's just how I think of Dungeon Defenders 2. That's how I thought of it at release. So now I always will unfairly judge it. I'm going to try to be objective, as objective as possible. Let's go ahead and check out all the other towers around the map. That one is taking some damage, but it's doing mostly fine. Let's head over here. This one clearly needs an upgrade. We'll go ahead and upgrade it. Once again, the upgrade system, very smooth and clean for Dungeon Defenders 2. Now I know that's upgraded. I can go ahead and upgrade this. Come over here and finish off this orc. Upgrade system, by far one of the best things the best way that i've felt about dungeon defenders 2 so far uh seeing that mana surrounding your character at the end of a wave very cool the badges and like a lot of the graphics very cool uh, i didn't hear much of a sound or much of music play when i got that level up though once again sound design it feels like it's hard lacking in dungeon defenders 2 and if you want to okay the instant upgrades while in build phase is kind of interesting um that's very interesting let's just go ahead and repair let's just repair all this um if you want to argue that like dungeon defenders 2 is a mobile game that's based around microtransaction stuff why not dump more money into into sound design sound design is one of the leading causes of human emotion a good song a good effect a good sound effect is going to make someone want to spend money as silly as it sounds um one of the best ways to make someone spend money could be a good sound effect a good that um dopamine of, of hitting that level up but i don't even feel that in dungeon defender so i don't even think it's doing a good job of what it's trying to be but maybe once again maybe i'm being too harsh let's keep playing also it's interesting to see it does seem like it seems like my heroes are getting passive xp even though they're, I'm not using them at all. So my Huntress, my Monk, they're a little behind on XP, but they are around it. They're around level 19. Um, now, one of the cooler things, this is a huge W for Dungeon Defenders 2, okay? Look at this progression when I upgrade my towers. Physical progression. We didn't have this in Dungeon Defenders 1. Seeing the tower get more stuff attached to it, that is so cool. That's really sick. We didn't have that in Dungeon Defenders 1. That's a huge... Um, I would say qual yeah, quality of life change um, that just adds a lot, but it's more than that. It's quality of life change that adds more impact to the game, not quality of life change that, like, that uh, I guess, tidies up tedious or, or silly mechanics. Let's go ahead and jump to the next wave and see what happens. See how it plays out. 
auto collected one item. So I don't know if that one item went to my like item storage or went ahead and went over to like burst like destroyed into mana. I'll have to see where my total mana is and how much like currency I have saved up if that's a thing in Dungeon Defenders too. Um something I hear, or I guess I'm curious about I, I bet this game is centered on endgame. And my main concern right now is the early game is very unsatisfying to me. And I really am not enjoying the early game. But maybe the later game or end game is a lot better. Um, I feel like Dungeon Defenders 1 ends up being really end game focused. But at the same time, the early and mid game is phenomenal. I think one of the biggest critiques of Dungeon Defenders 1, one of my things was this. Let's go check it out. One of the biggest critiques, in my opinion, of Dungeon Defenders 1. Let's go ahead and trigger that trap. We're failing a little bit here. Let's see if I can save it a little bit these guys are pretty strong it seems he's like orc types um that's under attack we'll get over to that in a quick sec where possible one of the biggest failings of dungeon defenders one i was trying to say was the fact that it's middle middle of the pack progression is pretty specific and pretty tough to oh there's a goblin here pretty tough to to figure out in my opinion um and what I mean by that is the uh, endless spires, nightmare difficulty, wave one type stuff. Like understanding how to farm mythicals and how to make that jump from levels like, understanding how to jump from like level 70 to 74 in terms of XP and in terms of gear is really difficult in my opinion. It's really tough to jump into uh, nightmare difficulty, even like just like the level one of the campaign without things like the Nessie pet, without a lot of recommendations from my comments and stuff over my Dungeon Defenders 1 series, I don't know if I would have been able to figure it out, which is a huge failing of, of, of a game design perspective and a huge failing of the game itself. Like, if if the mid-game can't be progressed and can't be figured out for, through natural means of gameplay as opposed to, like, needing a guide, and maybe I'm just dumb, I don't know, right? These dinosaurs are very fucking cool <laughs> enemy design. Uh, though I am losing here pretty hard. I'm losing here pretty hard. I will say this is another, this is a critique against Dungeon Defenders 1 as well, okay? I don't think that there is enough of a sound effect when one of your towers goes down. Uh, when one of your towers goes down, there should be way more of like a red blaring, sort of terrifying, like alarm type sound effect. That would definitely increase the impactfulness and increase the urgency in which you would respond with something like that happening. So a more drastic sound effect once again sound design super super important more drastic sound effect would be super good when a turret goes down in dungeon defenders one and two all right so there is some gear dropped by minions it does seem like but not as much as before which is totally understandable we'll go ahead and equip those gloves i think how do i actually see my gear i press the i key and holy god i just opened up an absolute mess of a ui why is there so many things on my screen at one time holy shit um why is this why is there so many items on one page bag one bag two but let me guess you have to buy more items or ba buy more bags bag one bag two bag three interesting 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 what is this defender packs or new way to unlock flares custom pets get packs is this just is this just an advertisement wow that is Remember you open them? Okay, you open them from there. Wow, there, yeah, there it is. Purchase bags, purchase more inventory slots. I'm not, uh, I'm, being able to purchase inventory slots is always a strange one for me in games. Um, I really wish there was a way to earn storage like this via playing. I think storage is a factor of gameplay, and I think the ability to earn that, if you could buy this with this type of currency as well, that'd be a really cool change to me, but it seems like it's only for heroes and such. Um, we've got the pets over here. We have so many weird item slots we've got, the, we've got a helmet equipped on our squire we've got a sword some gloves the gloves i just picked up boots not too much gear um it seems like you can equip medallions now that's really really cool adding the the idea of adding medallions this sort of equip to your towers that increases the stats of them so this medallion increases defense power and increases defense health that's fucking awesome what a cool way to customize towers in a wildly complex and strategic and like personal choice way that's really 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 interesting to me um is that even better how do i know what's better for me chest what's my current armor 46 this is oh way better right i'm gonna go ahead and equip that that's way better 
Um, that's a really cool change, though. The ability to add up to, like, three medallions, it seemed. What an incredibly smart idea to be able to add customization to your towers and have certain towers be able to do certain tasks. It's really cool to maybe be able to give like orc medallions to all of my cannonball turrets and those will be like the orc slaying tower for me. And then having something like an AOE sort of medallion maybe fire damage or something of the sort, just like shooting it, you know, spitting out ideas that could, could be possible in the game. Um, the idea of that on stuff like my harpoon, like be able to spread different medallions on different towers to let them do different goals is a really interesting way to open up customization and strategy uh, you get like green mana from running over and like picking up stuff from the dead corpses which is kind of interesting now this area died before so i'm gonna go ahead and really give it the support that it needs i'm low i'm totally out of totally out of green mana at that point though i'm gonna go ahead and try to press g here i think and then i'm just gonna have to kill some minions over here Okay, these are some strong guys. New enemy incoming. Why would it not say that in a more, like, broad way? Uh, these are level 36. It's interesting to see that the enemies are, like, leveled. I haven't really taken notice of that. That is super interesting. I didn't mean to press Q there. I want to press 1 and see how much damage that does. Wow, that killed the... I guess I had slashed him down a bunch, though. We're going to pick up some green mana from over here. And then I only have 52 still. I need to get enough for... Actually, no, that is enough. I just don't know my mana numbers. Get enough for a harpoon and then bring that over here. Or actually, let's go ahead and place a Cannonball Cinch. I do think that Cannonballs are probably going to be better if I have that medallion on them. A Spike Blockade was destroyed somewhere else, unfortunately. I'm going to go ahead and use my spells. I should be using my spells a lot more, I will say. That's something I'm not utilizing nearly enough. The Throne is under attack. I'll have to go protect that. Wyverns are coming in. Didn't expect that. Didn't know about that. That's not good. I don't have anything set up to protect my core from Wyverns. My best bet is probably the slash. Hard for me to get attacks on the... Like, I can't hit him from there. I have to, like, jump. Yeah, there's a really weird... It's really tough to protect that from the wyverns as the squire. This area is getting obliterated. Let's go ahead and start an upgrade on that. West window's under control. I'm going to go ahead. It does seem like your hero seems to have so much more impact in Dungeon Defenders 2. Like, your your swings and your manual combat, which I do like. Like, Dungeon Defenders 1 was such a hard tower defense game. Um, probably to a point of problem. And I love hard tower defense games, okay? But I do think Dungeon Defenders is the series that probably takes, probably is at its peak when you're doing the best, um, like, perfect mixture of building towers and protecting those towers as well as hack and slash combat. I think the perfect... Dungeon Defender's experience probably comes from a perfect mixture of those two things. There's the wave complete. It was really, really hard, though. And I'm really low on mana. A lot of things have been destroyed. I do fair, I also have more defense units up than I realized. 750 at 1100. I'm going to go ahead and repair everything possible. I need enough defense units. I don't want to just level everything up. I want enough defense units to be able to place more things and actually be able to pull through. It's going to be a tight squeeze to be able to win this, but I do think it's possible. There's a bunch of medallions and other pieces of gear on the ground. I'm picking up any sort of medallions that can be abused because those do seem super important and very good. Once again, the quick ability to repair and upgrade stuff, you could probably get super fast and super efficient with, with that sort of thing. That's a really nice welcome change to Dungeon Defenders 2 for sure. And also the clarity of the keybinds. The clarity of the keybinds of the bottom UI is way better than Dungeon Defenders 1. I just don't like the health and like the, the defense units, the health, and the mana showing is not as clear, I would argue, in Dungeon Defenders 2. Um, I do like the center placement. That's, like, not even terrible. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, it's something to get used to. Some people prefer that. Some people don't. I wonder if there's any UI customization that would also be wildly interesting to look into. Um, I can actually see... I can see wyverns will be coming in from up here, it seems like. East Vent Air. That's really interesting. So it does show me where the wyverns are coming in from. I wonder if I can go ahead and place like harpoons over here if i can go ahead and protect these two areas from the wyverns that would be really 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 good for me so let's try to place that like that hopefully that takes care of them coming in and this one will be in the other direction that should take care of the wyverns hopefully i'm really hoping all right with 60 defense units left i'm feeling pretty safe to just go ahead and set up or just go ahead and pump upgrades honestly into stuff i could go ahead and go for some more towers but i just don't even know if it's going to be necessary things here look pretty good i just want to go ahead and pump stuff into existing towers 
Auto collected three items. Now, usually, something scary is happening. I liked that little image popped up on stream to let me know, hey, there's a big scary guy coming in. You might want to go support that. That's a good thing. The, the, well, so it didn't, oh, it's a boss, Draken. Okay, I will say it didn't show it. I need to use my abilities way more. It didn't show it. There's no message. There was no like, oh, Draken has appeared. I don't think I could have missed it. Um, in Dungeon Defenders 1, one of the most terrifying sounds when you were early game was an ogre has appeared on the map. So something similar to that. Once again, lacking of sound design, something like a the Draken has you know dropped on the map could be super super impactful for fear factor as well as awareness like that, and that just does so much for a game. Uh, this thing is pretty freaking strong, drawing a lot of my attention. The throne is under attack. I assume that's the wyverns. Hopefully, they're getting taken care of a little bit by the ballistas. It seems like that one took some damage before making it here but didn't do enough. Uh, can I get upgrades on these? Not enough. I don't have enough mana. Is this guy even getting targeted? I don't know if he is. He's almost dead, though. The boss is down. That's huge. A bunch of loot there. I'll come back for that later. I, in the meantime, I have to go help. This section is being obliterated. Running low on blue mana. This is definitely tough. Like, Dungeon Defenders 2 is having a pretty good, I would argue, difficulty level. Definitely one of the most... Ooh, interesting balance decisions that I've noticed so far. Ooh, with a lot of wyverns coming in here. As I would argue, or one of the, I guess the best one of the best things to talk about it so far, probably in general, is just the difficulty having a pretty good pacing. Oh, this needs some help. Man, these harpoons not being able to take care of this is pretty brutal. Oh no, these guys are getting through now. I'm probably gonna lose here soon. Well, maybe I'm fine. How many minions are left? I think I actually win, but really, it's really, really, it was really, really close. That thing's at 418 HP, but I think there's only one minion left. I think it's going to be a W, but that was a close call, fellas. There it is. Defend the throne room. What a pop-up. Now, that's a cool one. And we get a little cutscene. Oh, please tell me there's not like another wave or something or some sort of boss fight. That was something I'm not prepared for. We do get a cracked dragon smacking his head into some glass. Talk about better sound design. A lot scarier there. Better. I would have, I would have loved to hear a crack noise from the glass, but um, and this music is classic to Dungeon Defenders 1, which is fantastic. All right. Not bad. F beat this map for the first time ever in Dungeon Defenders 2. We get our little chest from defeating the map, which is very... I really do like this chest system. I think in a game that wasn't so seemingly microtransaction heavy, I could see this being a really fun and cool way to do this, but I can't even read the item stuff because of the little chat boxes in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Open use to receive a random shard from this pool. I don't know what that entails. To, oh, this is shard stuff. I haven't gotten into shards yet. I don't know how those are going to. I want to equip these boots. They're better. I like that it doesn't auto compare stuff. You do have to press shift. Which I think is kind of cool. We can go to equip that. That's better. A bunch of gear upgrades pretty easily so far. I wonder if you have to pay for the chest and then you also have to play to actually be able to get them. Like some, That'd be really, really interesting. Um, guys cowering up here. But we did go ahead and defeat this level. If I press G to move on, is that going to send me back to the tavern or just send me on to the next level? As we get to pick next map, to tavern, or to town. I gained how much XP we can see. I can't tell. I, map earned. I, I can't even tell. XP 84,000. I'm currently at 34, 35k out of 50k XP to level 21. Interesting. Let's go ahead and head over to town. Let's see what the town looks like. What does this entail? An ad for trying their new heroes. Okay, interesting, interesting. I mean, that's fine. Every game is going to have that. That's understand. Obviously, pushing microtransaction in, in, in the loading screens. That's mostly fine. If you want to do that, more power to you. More power to you. So here is the town, and here we can see all of the players of Dungeon Defenders too. Let's see what's going on. We can see his listings. It's going to be like his shop. The idea of a dungeon defender shop always seems so cool to me. That always did seem like such an underdeveloped, underappreciated part of dungeon defenders in general. The pets are cool. The town, this should have been 
implemented more in Dungeon Defenders 1. Just having a base hub town where you can go to to hang out and be in like a public location as opposed to just having private taverns or just having open taverns for four people only. Um, the idea of having a massive location where everybody, a hub where people gather that it can hold more than four people it is very... I feel like crucial to the Dungeon Defenders experience or could work really well with the Dungeon Defenders experience. Let's follow our Squire friend. This is really cool. I don't know what this mysterious portal. Difficulty, try the heroes. You've selected normalized play. This gives you a chance to rules. Gotcha. This is just a way to try out the new. That's interesting. Um, interesting. Unlocked ancient powers. There seems to be... Okay, I love complication as much as the next guy. And I love a nice, deep, complicated game. But what, what worries me with Dungeon Defenders 2, and this is how it seems to me, it seems like a game that just has a ton of different little systems. A ton of ancient powers, shards, blue mana, green mana, a ton of different little systems. And what that usually allows games to do, mobile games do this a lot, it allows for you to be able to gamba or gamble or spend your money in all of these different systems. You have these things that cost, you know, eggs. Like there's so many different shops around, so many different systems to an extent of where it makes me just feel like they're here for to be another way for you to spend your money. I could be wrong. I could be misreading this whole thing. I would love for Dungeon Defenders 2 advocates to tell me about their game. Tell me what there is to appreciate and enjoy. Is it worth pushing past the microtransactions? Are the microtransactions the fun of it? Say, fuck it. You know what? I work all day. I want to come home, play a fun game, and maybe put some, you know, put some money into it to reward myself. That's fine. If that's you, more power to you. I hope you enjoy it. Um, this is sadly not the game for me. I don't think that Dungeon Defenders 2 is the game for me. There's a lot of beauty to it. Some cool elements here and there, some quality of life stuff I could see Dungeon Defenders 1 taking on. But I think this is why there is a huge community still with Dungeon Defenders 1 and un other Dungeon Defenders games. Maybe I'm missing something from Dungeon Defenders 2 and I would love to have it explained. But for now, my journey is going to end here. I, I plan to maybe consider doing another series on my channel with Dungeon Defenders 2. I actually desperately need another game to take up that slot as the Terraria series may be coming to an end. But... I don't know. I don't see myself being able to play this game and having fun. That's where I'm at with DD2. So apologies for the negative first impressions. There's a lot. You know what? There's not a lot that I could see loving from this game, though. It's mostly just visuals and stuff. There's a lot that I see wrong with the game at a first glance in a first hour of impressions. But hopefully you guys have at least enjoyed this video. Teach me where I'm wrong. Tell me about it. Like the video if you liked it, dislike if not, and subscribe for daily videos. I'll see you guys later. I'll see you around. Peace, Areno.